Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Amen. And I know Amen. it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, but happy Amen. Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Ooh, y'all awful quiet this morning. Let me try that again. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, all right. We have so much that we can be thankful for. And so we greet you who are here. Uh, in the auditorium with us and we also greet you who are joining us online we recognize that you could be anywhere but you've decided to come and to worship with us here at fresh visions community church where we worship the risen and the only god right here at 1551 j david jones parkway in springfield illinois and we just come to bless his name. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I appreciate all the times of the year, but I especially appreciate this time of the year because it appears, appears as if folk uh, are on one accord and you find people that uh, they seem to be a little bit more nice in Walmart, <laughs> a little bit more pleasant, um, and, and, and a little bit more thankful because when we look around and when we see all that has happened, all that goes on, um, we don't have to be doing anything for anyone to do us harm anymore. People can go from zero to a hundred in a matter of seconds. And so we are grateful and thankful for God's keeping power. Uh, we're grateful and we're thankful for how he continues to shower his many blessings down upon us. Even in spite of us, he continues to wake us up every day. Amen. There's some who set the alarm clock last night. The alarm clock went off and they kept sleeping. But we were one of those that God allowed to wake up and to behold a brand new day. And for that, I give him thanks. For that, I give him praise. For that, I give him glory. We had opportunity to visit family over this last week. And uh, as we were driving, we went from Springfield to Cincinnati uh, to pick up our daughter and then from Cincinnati to Atlanta, and then from Atlanta to Louisville to have breakfast with our daughter and her husband, and then back to Cincinnati. And when I think about all the travel, all that we did, all the in and out, and how God protected us from accidents, he kept the deer where the deer needed to be, not on the highway, but I'm not kidding. I was praying and I said, God, keep the little deer in the forest where the deer belong and not in the middle of the highway where we might hit them. So maybe you don't thank God like that and maybe that's a, a selfish prayer, but it's, it's the prayer that we prayed as we traveled the country. But even as we were traveling, I was looking across God's great land and I was just beholding the beauty of his land, the mountains and the hills and the sun as it was rising as we drove into the sun. And then as we drove into the night, just how he allowed his sun to set. And I said, who wouldn't serve a God like that, that can take and do what he wants to do with nature? And so we give him praise. We thank him even for that. And then as we traveled, as we saw family, everybody was doing all right. And so that was enough to praise him for. We came together at a happy occasion and not a sad occasion. So we pray that you had a great Thanksgiving and we pray that you came to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray that you came to glorify. We pray that you came to magnify him because he is worthy to be praised. And we will open up this morning with uh, scripture and with prayer. And we ask you to bow in your hearts, uh, bow in your minds as you meditate on how good God has been. Um, and in your own way, just worship him for being such an amazing and an awesome God. Amen. Our scripture. Good morning. Good morning. 
certainly this is the day that the Lord has made Hallelujah. and I'm rejoicing so I hope you're rejoicing with us amen amen I'm gonna go with Psalms 23 it's one of my favorites the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies he anoints my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy yeah. shall follow me all the days of my life yeah. and I will dwell in the house of the Lord amen amen, amen. that's a good amen. thing right amen. there amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah hallelujah amen good morning church good morning. Good morning I was um, reflecting on 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 this morning where it says these three things remain faith hope and love yeah and the greatest thing the greatest of these is love and I got to thinking about how there are some things that pass away and that fade away and it seems like the sunniness and the weather is fading away yeah, yeah. and some of our money was spending on Christmas <laughs> gifts and things fading are fading away, away. And even um, in this holiday season, some of us have um, lost loved ones. And, yeah. and I think about all of the things that um, we tend to lose, but the Bible says that there are some things that remain, and that is faith, hope, and love. And Jesus remains, and his spirit and his love remains for us. And so we can find hope and um gratefulness and that that even though there are some things that fade away that there are some things that are yeah. steadfast yeah. like the love of the Lord that yeah. that never yeah. ceases and so as we meditate on that um, and go before the throne of grace yes. great is thy faithfulness yes, God. great is thy faithfulness yes, God. morning by morning new mercies we see yeah. all that we have needed Lord thy hand have yeah. provided great is thy faithfulness eternal God our Father we come Father God as your people with bowed heads Father God and humbled hearts Father God just to give your name the praise that you so richly deserve Father God we thank you God thank for you, God. being with us Father God we thank you yeah. for being yeah. so awesome and so loving and so wonderful yeah. Father yeah. God in spite of us Father God in spite of our faults in spite of our flaws in spite of our wickedness Father God in spite of our evilness in spite of our selfishness Father yeah. God you have yeah. still been God and you have still been faithful Father God you have still provided Lord you have still kept us safe Father God you have have still put food on our table and clothes on our backs Father God you still allowed our golden days to go on just a little while longer Father God and it's not Father God by our own doing and our own merit Father God but it's only because of your grace and your mercy that we are here today Father God only by your grace and mercy that we're here today, Father God. We we can't earn your love, Father God. We can't earn anything, Father God. There's nothing that we can do, Father God, to earn anything that you've given us, Father God. But it's only because of your grace and mercy, Father God. And for that, we say thank you and hallelujah and glory to your name, Father God. Father God, we know, Lord, that you are an awesome God, that you're a mighty God. And all, Father God, that we have needed you provided father god and we're grateful father god and we stand on in this sunday father god with um expectation father god knowing that you're able father god knowing that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask think or imagine father god 
and I don't, Father God, know the, 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 the hearts or the minds or the needs of your people, Father God, but you know, Lord. You know each and every one of us, Father God. You know the number of hairs on our head, Father God. You know everything about your people, Father God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that someone press their way, Father God, in spite of the weather, Father God, in spite of how they were feeling, Father God, in spite of everything that pressed their way into here, Father God, to hear a word from you, Father God. And I pray that you will not disappoint, Father God, like you never do, but that you will meet them at their point of need, Father God. Send a word from on high, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Speak, Father God, through the message, Lord. Speak, Father God, through song, Lord. Touch the hearts of your people, Father God. We don't want to leave here like we came in Jesus' name, Father God. Saturate the atmosphere, Father God. Pour out your spirit into this space and in this place, Father God. Move, Lord, in a mighty way, Father God. Make your presence felt in this space, Father God. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. We're not ashamed, Father God, to say that we need you, Lord. We're here on today because we need you, Father God. We pressed our way into church, Father God, because we need you, O Lord. And we open up our mouths, Father God, and say hallelujah and glory to your name, Father God, because we expect, Father God, you to do a mighty thing, Father God, on today, Father God. We know you're able, Father God, and we just give it all to you, Father God. Everything that is burdening us, Father God, everything that is weighing us down, we turn it over to you, Father God. We're not walking out of here with, that, with it, Father God. We leave it at the altar, Father God. We leave it at your feet, knowing that you can do with those things far better than we can, Lord. Have your way in this space, Father God. Have your way in this space, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, help your people, Father God. Help us, Lord. We need you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise, knowing, Father God, that it is already done. It's already done, God. We have faith in you, Lord, that it's already done. Hallelujah. We give you premature praise for already working it out. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you and glory to your name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise God with our hand clap on this morning. Our Sunday school this morning talked about freedom to edify. And it was talking about building up. Paul was talking about the importance of building up. But when you read down further in the lesson, uh, one of the, the, the verses said, let everything that we do be done for the glory of God. Yeah. And so everything that we do, whether we eat, whether we drink, what, everything we do, when we're at work, when we're at school, everything we do, when we're shopping, when we're talking, when we're on the phone, everything we do, we do, even when we're on Facebook, when we're tweeting, everything we do should be done to the glory of God. So we have to ask ourselves, are we doing things for the glory of God, Hallelujah. to the glory of God, Hallelujah. in the way we walk, in the way we talk, in the way we live, in the way we give. Are we doing it to the glory of God? And this song simply says, all the glory yeah. belongs to you, O oh God. Yeah. So everything we have, everything we are belongs to him. And we invite you to stand uh, and join in with us. Uh, as we sing praise and as you join in and help us sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Yeah, yeah. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. Oh God. Help me say. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory. All the glory belongs to you. Oh
to him because he is a great God and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. How great is our God? Great. How great is our God?
God for his goodness. Praise God for who he is. Amen. Come on, thank the Lord for being God all by himself. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord and you didn't allow that little snow, that little rain to keep you from being here. Praise God. Thank God for you. Praise God. Thank God for those who are online and worshiping with us and we are grateful. Let's thank the Lord again for this music ministry and leading us in the presence of our God. For he is a great God and he is greatly to be praised. I trust that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, I've already heard the testimonies that somebody went back for more rounds than one for two for three some went back four times and uh for their uh, turkey and dressing but we are grateful that you're here and we are grateful again for those who are tuning in let's go before the lord in prayer and we just want to get right into the word today amen let's pray god thank you so much for this privilege and this opportunity to worship you god truly you are great you are an amazing father and we bless your holy name thank you god for being our savior thank you for being our lord and god we submit our will to your divine will to you be the glory god speak god with clarity speak to your people let them hear from you that you might be glorified. Lord, those who don't know you, those who are struggling with this decision to follow you, we pray that you will move by your spirit, move by your power. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, the people of God said amen and amen. Praise God, praise God. Um, I want to get right into the word of God today, the word of God from Luke 11, Luke 11. We want to jump right into the word from Luke 11. Dr. Luke's writing the 11th chapter, verses 5 through 10. Luke 11, verses 5 through 10. I'm reading today from the New King James Version, and we'll be referencing some others as we go along. You got Luke 11, chapter, verse 5. Somebody say amen. All right, all right. And if it's hard to find, I think it's on the screen there. So for those who are struggling, just look up. Look up. It's on the screen. This is what the word of the Lord says. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, Lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. 
the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give to you. Verse 8, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, yeah. he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Yeah. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open thank God for God's word for a few moments I want to use for a subject the power of persistent prayer the power the power of persistent prayer we as humans will never live a perfect life, but we can learn much by learning about and modeling the life of Jesus Christ. While we won't reach perfection, we won't be uh, sinless like Jesus, we can strive to for him as an example to be our model to follow so Luke 11 Luke 11 opens with Jesus praying and and if we go no further what's the message for us today we should be praying because he set in the model he set in the example of how we should conduct ourselves. So he's praying to his father and the disciple, one of the disciples uh, comes to Jesus while he's praying or somewhere uh, during his prayer or after his prayer and he says, Lord, teach us to pray. Yeah. He, he says, John taught his disciples and his disciples know how to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. And, and, and here's something to hold on to. It's always good to want to pray. Are, are, are you with me today? It, it, it's always good to know what to pray for and who to pray to. Now, when our children were little, we were teaching them how to pray, teaching them young parents, teach them young. Uh, so we were teaching them how to pray. We would model the pr prayer before them, pray with them. And sometimes when they, when they got to an, a, a, a stage uh, that they were able to pray, we allowed them to pray. Yeah. Now, when they would pray at a young age, they would pray for dogs. They would pray for cats. Yeah. They would thank the Lord for the seat belts that they, they were able to put on. They would thank the Lord for the sidewalks that they were, the, the cracks in the side. They were praying for everything. But they were learning to do what? Pray. To pray. And they were learning at a young age. And it's so important. It's so important that we, one, teach our young people our children the importance of praying that, that, that there are some things that you won't be able to fix and, and maybe there are some older people that need to hear this there are some things you can't pay for there are some medications that ain't gonna work for you we need to understand and value and grasp the power and the importance of prayer. And so here it is, these disciples and John's disciples, they wanted to learn to pray. But here's something else to grab hold of. Praying goes beyond when you don't know the answers on the test. Or, or when you didn't do the homework, students, and, and, and you're hoping that the teacher doesn't show up or doesn't request the homework. I know everything is electronic now. They just tell you we need this by this or by this time, right? Uh, and, and, and so so prayer goes beyond that. 
praying is consistently being in sincere fellowship with the Father. And so that's why he says we should always pray. We should be in consistent fellowship with the Father. Every prayer doesn't require us to be on our knees. Everybody with us. Every prayer doesn't require us to close our eyes. Every prayer doesn't require us to hold hands. But he expects us to pray. And there are benefits for us being in consistent fellowship with the Father. We are listening and talking with the Father. What a great opportunity that the Lord of the universe has given us direct access 24 hours a day, seven days a week to be in fellowship with him. So apparently there's nothing wrong with asking the Father to teach us to pray. We ought to ask the Lord to teach us to pray. Because for some, for some, if somebody asks them to pray, somebody going to have a heart attack. Especially if it's two or three other people around. Are you with me today? And so it's good to go to the Lord in private. Even if it's Lord, just in case somebody asked me to pray and I don't want to have a heart attack, Lord, teach me to pray. Teach me to pray. The disciple says, we want to learn to pray. So here's a question. Here's a question. Be, answer, be, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. When you hear the word prayer, how does it make you feel? Just hearing the word prayer. Does guilt come to your mind because I don't pray enough or I've been too busy lately? Well, I don't pray as much as I used to. Well, I haven't had any fears, so there's no need to pray. Perhaps you heard about the little boy. The little boy asked, uh, told, proudly told his Sunday school teacher, I pray every night. The teacher says, that's good. She said, do you ever pray in the daytime? He says, no, I'm not scared in the daytime. <laughs> Because some of us just pray when we are scared, when there's tragedy. When you hear the words prayer, how do you feel? Is it frustration that you're feeling because it seems like nothing is happening when you prayed before? When you cry out to God, there appears to be silence, so now it's frustrating. When you lift up your voice, it seems to fall on deaf ears. So now when you hear the word praying or prayer, you only have a feeling of frustration. Or is it apathy? Apathy because you really don't have any feelings about any prayer anymore because in the past when you prayed, it just seemed like nothing happened. And so now you're cold and careless for prayer or praying. Well, I want to share two key takeaways that Jesus wants us to grasp. Two key takeaways. One, we should always be in prayer. And two, we should never give up on God. That's the two takeaways for today. We should always be in prayer, and we should never give up on God. If somebody say, what, what was the message about? Ask the question, what was the message about today? Here it is. We should always be in prayer, and we should never give up on God. That's what he's trying to get us to grasp today. Notice verses 2 through 4, Jesus provides an abbreviated version of the Lord's Prayer. He's praying, and then he provides an abbreviated 
version of the Lord's Prayer or it's more of a model prayer, how he taught his disciples to pray. Pray in this manner. This is a model. We should formulate our own sincere prayer from this model. Yeah. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. The yeah. Lord's Prayer, what we know as the Lord's Prayer, is not a good luck term. Yeah. Right? It, it, it's an example. It's a template. And you can put your situations, your family, your areas that, that, that you would like to bring before God in this model. Yeah. This is what he's teaching his disciples. This is what he's teaching us today. We should always pray. We should always pray. And here's a model for us to use. But please understand, I come to know that everybody don't see the importance of praying. Yes. And everyone is not going to ask the Lord to teach us to pray. Yes. Are you with me today? Yes. I believe that people want a personal relationship with God, but the, the, the area of praying doesn't really resonate with everybody. Because it seems like uh, I have to compare myself with Deacon Boo or Mother Sue. And if I'm not praying like Deacon Boo and Mother Sue, God really ain't hearing my prayer. And God is really looking for the sincerity of individual's heart yes, yes. and he's not comparing your sincere prayer with Deacon Boo's prayer. Are you feeling me today? Yes, yes. He's not concerned about you breaking your subject and verbs and not praying like Mother Sue. Right. God wants you to approach him in sincere prayer. Yes with your sincere prayer. I did say your sincere prayer, right? Yeah. Not comparing it with somebody else because you have your concerns and you have your issues and you have your heart's desires and God wants to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I wish the church was praying with me today. Yeah. He wants to hear from you. That's a good place to say amen. That's a good place to thank the Lord that he wants to hear from me. Yeah, yes he does. And he's not wanting other folks' prayers coming from me. Mama. I'm almost done with this. And so I was, I, was, I was eating, preparing to eat with someone not too long ago. And, and sometimes, again, different situations. Sometimes it's, it's, it's appropriate to have... Um, um, audible prayers with, with others and sometimes it's appropriate, appropriate to, to, to be an individual prayer. So this particular time I was with this person and, and we were getting ready to eat and so I just decided to pause to bow briefly to ask God's blessings upon my respective meal. And, 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 and the person said, what's wrong? <laughs> it was like you, you, you don't like the meal, what, you, what you're seeing? <laughs> and, and I wasn't offended. Right. I, I, it, it was a teachable moment. Yeah. It, it was clear that this person was on a different page yeah. uh, than I was when it came to prayer. Yeah. And, and I had the opportunity to share that, that, that I believe it's important that we pause to thank God for the meal. And, 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 and sometimes we can pause to take, thank God, even as we're eating. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes in some customs, it's more appropriate to pray after yeah. the meal. But, but I had an opportunity that, that nothing was wrong with the meal, that I just believe that it's important to pause to thank God for the pr food. Amen. Yeah. That's important because that's part of praying. Yeah. Yeah. People don't always say, teach me to pray, but people need to know why it's important to pray. Yeah. And so Jesus builds on this question and his response on how to pray. Look at verse 5 through 7, real quick, real quick, verses 5 through 7 again. And he said to them, which of you have 
a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed and I cannot rise and give to you. And so, so these few verses, he's helping us to put things in perspective because most of us um, don't want to be disturbed when we are sleeping or resting, right? The one time that we put our uh, mobile devices down is when we are sleeping and resting, right? <laughs> Be, because we don't want to be disturbed. That's the problem for the only time for some. Some fall asleep with it on their on their chest and, uh, because we don't, you know, we, we, we didn't intend to put that away. I ain't trying to mess with nobody's business. Years ago, years ago, a person was going through some stressful times and had been overwhelmed with life and the journey of life. And, and I knew the person and knew uh, that the person was going through some challenging times. So about one or two o'clock in the morning, we hear some knocking at our door. Uh, usually we don't entertain uh, that late uh, one or, two, or that early, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. There was some knocking at the door. And uh, two thoughts came to mind, two thoughts. One flashback was when we had babies. And, and I would say, Jack, it's your time to get up. <laughs> you know, you, you hear the baby crying, or it's time to change the baby or feed. So that was one flashback that came to my mind, the wonder if Jack is gonna get up because somebody is knocking at the door. Uh, the second thing that, that, that came to my mind was this particular scripture that I just read. I looked out and it came to my mind, do not trouble me. The door is shut <laughs> and the children are in the bed and I cannot ride. That was the second thing that, that, that came to my mind. But the person kept knocking, kept, kept, kept knocking. There was a consistent knock, and I looked out the window, knew who the person was, knew what the person was going through, let the person in. We had a brief conversation. We prayed, and the person left. Now, here's the thing about this area. Our Lord is not suggesting that God, God gets tired of us knocking. He's not suggesting that, that, that God gets tired of us approaching him. He's not saying that the Lord gets sleepy or weary. He, he doesn't get sleepy or weary. He's up all night. But he's revealing to us that we can pray to the Father. In fact, we should be persistent in our coming to the Father. And we should be shamelessly bold in approaching the Father. Yeah. Now, if you follow Luke's writing and you go over to the 18th chapter, uh, I'm not going to read it, but when you get home, go to the 18th chapter of Luke. And Jesus gives a parable about an unjust judge. Anybody remember about this unjust judge? In Luke 18, he says, there's an unjust judge who did not fear God and didn't care too much about people, but yet he's a judge. That's a bad place to be, amen, when you don't care about people and you don't fear God, and then you got to make decisions for people. And then he goes on to say, and there was a widow a widow, a widow, someone whose husband has died and she usually didn't have anyone to speak on her behalf unless someone else took care of her. But apparently no one stepped up to care for this widow. And so the widow took it up on herself 
And she kept coming to this judge requesting in a plea that he, for, for justice against her adversary. And for some time, the scripture says in this parable that this unjust judge, uh, uh, he would not hear her request or he refused her request. But the scripture goes on to say, but because of her persistence, this judge who didn't fear God and could care less about people and what people felt and how they felt, this judge says, this woman is going to wear me out. Yeah, yeah. And so this judge was willing to hear her and to hear her cry and to give her justice. Yeah, yeah. What is Jesus saying in this parable? There's a message. Then Jesus goes on to say that if this unjust judge will grant justice because of the persistence of this widow. Will God not bring justice to his chosen who cry out to him day and night? He says, here is someone who could care less about you. And here is someone who could really care less about justice. But because she kept knocking, because she was persistent, the judge recognized that I can't keep living like this. I have to give this woman justice. But I need to go a little further with this judge and God because the judge is a contrast rather than a comparison of God. Be Please notice the judge didn't fear God, but the Lord is God. The judge didn't care about people, but the Lord is crazy about people and he loves people unconditionally. The judge didn't want the widow or people to bother him but the Lord welcomes and loves when widows and people will come to him we know about grace and mercy but while on earth we should also expect justice let me go a little further with this contrast of the widow and, 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 and us this time. We, 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 the widow was forgotten and abandoned and disconnected. No direct access to the judge, but we are in the family of God. We have been adopted into his family. We are sons and daughters of the Lord. We are joint heirs with him. We are in a favorite position. We have direct access to the Father. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Aren't you thankful that God does not get sick and tired of us? He always welcomes us. Now, there are times our faith will be put to the test and people will question your belief in a God that you can't see. People will say you are wasting your time studying an outdated book because times have changed and you have to change with the time. But because you refuse to live and talk like everyone else, they'll tell you that you're missing out on all the fun. People often misquote or quote scripture out of context to attempt to discredit God and the power of the word of God. But my encouragement to the young and the not so young today is to continue to trust the Lord. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Be consistent and persistent in prayer and your walk with the Lord. When you put your life in the Lord's hands, you're not missing out. <laughs> you're not missing out on their fun. You're not missing out on what the Lord wants for you. You are walking in power when you put your life in the Lord's hand. You know who you are because you know whose you are when you put your life in the Lord's hand. 
you know where you come from and you know where you're going when you put your life in the Lord's hand. You really know how to live because you really didn't begin to live until you put your life in the Lord's hand. Because the scripture says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins when we were out of the will of God. So we really weren't living, but we were dying outside of the will of God. But when you know who you are, you don't allow an ACT score, SAT score to determine your identity. When you know who you are, you don't allow how many points you scored or how many free throws you missed in an athletic sporting event because you know who you are. And it's not based on performance. It's based on God's love. For he loved us with an unconditional love that he sent his son Jesus to the cross and his son gave his life on our behalf, took our place because he knew we needed a savior. We weren't good enough. We weren't smart enough to die for ourselves. We needed a savior and the savior gave his life. And so now he teaches us how to live how to live for him and it comes through a consistent and persistent prayer life father i want to hear what you say i know we get these little news blips here and there and this little uh phrases here and there if you read something now online they just give you enough to click on it you know get get your attention and, 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 and many times it's nothing. It's like, that was a waste of time. <laughs> but here God says, I welcome you to come and be in fellowship with me and to learn and to grow because there are a lot of distractions. There are a lot of things that are pulling you away from God. Let me, let me, let me share something real quickly. We were talking about this in our newcomers session. Remember the sisters, Mary and Martha? Yeah. Mary and Martha, but good, good, good ladies and, 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 and good intentions. Both had the right intentions. And, 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 and this was Lazarus' sisters, remember? And, and so Jesus shows up at the house. They welcome her in, welcome Jesus in. And, 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 and Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. She's learning, she's growing, she's wanting to hear about Christ and how she should live and perhaps how she should raise her family, how she should live a, a, product, a, a productive life. And, and, and her sister Martha is back in the kitchen, you know, cleaning dishes and, 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 and putting pots away and, and making sure that the floor is, is, is in order. And, and then she just kept doing her thing. And then she said, hold up. I'm cleaning these pots and pans and I'm putting these dishes away and Mary ain't in here with me. And she had the audacity to, to, to go out and talk to Jesus and say, Jesus, make my sister get up from your feet and come in the kitchen and help me with them pots and pans. Now, please hear me. Jesus is not suggesting that we have filthy kitchens. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's not what he's saying. But he is saying don't get so caught up on cleanliness of the dishes and putting stuff away that you miss out on the opportunity, the privilege, the benefits of sitting at his feet and allowing him to pour into you and when you are intentional about setting time aside at the master's feet he'll make sure you got some time to clean those pots and clean those pans and clean that kitchen amen praise the lord hallelujah for the clean kitchen but make sure that you don't neglect sitting at the foot of Jesus because he had to correct Martha. He says, Martha, you getting yourself all worked up for nothing. Mary has chosen the right thing to do to be intentional about sitting at my feet 
so that I can pour into her and then I'll make sure she has plenty of time to take care of those kitchen pots and pans. Praise the Lord. And some of us need to be intentional about spending time and sitting at the feet of Jesus and he'll make sure that you have the time and the resources to do other things. For he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added when we get so distracted and we're so focused on getting this in order and that in order and doing this and doing that and we never sit at the foot of Jesus. Life is out of order. And you're missing out on the fellowship with the master. He wants you to be consistent and persistent. He wants you to keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. And when you ask, you'll receive. When you seek, you'll find. When you knock, the door will be open open to you notice what he says to you because you have been in persistent prayer and in fellowship with the master will you just bow your heart bow your head right where you are and be honest with yourself and with God Acknowledge where things are out of order and what has become, here it is, your small God that you don't have time to spend time at the feet of Jesus. He's welcoming you. He's wanting to hear from you. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get weary. We get tired. We don't want to be disturbed. We fall asleep, but the Lord never does. And here's the other thing. If you have not yet made a personal commitment to make Jesus your Lord, today is a great day. 2024 is not promised to us. Some may say, I'm going to wait till 2024 to get it right. Every moment is a gift from God. And it's not promised that we'll have breath enough to make it to the next moment. Today is the day of salvation. Father, we pause in your presence. We believe that you're Lord, you're King, you're God. We thank you, God. For your word, we thank you for your message. And God, we're grateful that we can call upon you. We can cry out to you. We can pray to you. And we're grateful that you hear us. Thank you for the message of the importance of persistent prayer, oh God. Thank you, God, that we can keep knocking. We can keep seeking. God, we can keep asking. Lord, we're grateful that you never get tired of us. So even now, God, as your people are doing a personal assessment, looking within, will you speak? Will you reveal? Will you manifest, oh God, that God, as we put you first, all the other things has a way of falling in line according to your divine order. So we bless you. We give you thanks, God. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for drawing your people to yourself. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Will the people, people of God say amen? Amen. If you're able to, if you're able to stand, if you're able to stand, come on. Let's thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank him for his love. For those who are new to us, this is the time that we extend an invitation. Maybe you're ready to follow God with your heart. Praise God. Come on. Come on, family. Come on. Come on. There's room, there's room. Praise God. Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Welcome. You are my strength. Welcome, God bless you.
bless you. Come on. Strength come on. Come on. Like Let's go, Father. Come on. Somebody come and just pray with them. Just Strength come and pray with them. Like no just pray with them. Father. Praise God. Reach There's still room. To Others who are following God. Know it's your time to you make a commitment. We extend this invitation hope. to you. Hope like no Thank the Lord for what he is adding to the church. Praise God. And this is Sister Smith, Slater, and Bates. Did I get it right? Man, I mess it up. Smith, Bates, Banks, our sisters are here. Praise God. And we will be getting the information after benediction and uh, we are grateful for our intake uh, the scripture in Acts talks about how the Lord adds to the church such as he sees fit and we are grateful for these sisters who are not uh, first time visitors but not long time visitors either and I just want you to stand in agreement, stay in your hands extend your hands in agreement God we just thank you God for these sisters oh God bless them God I might forget their names but you don't forget them God and we are so grateful pray for them individually and their extended family oh God guide as only you can and oh God help us God to be those building blocks and not stumbling blocks Lord we want to walk alongside oh God and then allow them to use the gifts and the talents that you bless them with this is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus name 
Amen and amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. We're going to be um, acknowledging all of our new members early December. Early December. So we got to do that. So um, we want to make sure that we get, uh, you can see all of the ones that God has added. And so praise God. And you can return to you can return to your seats for now. Ms. Pat Karen will see you after the service. So please hang around right after service and uh, we'll make sure that we get your contact information so you can return to your seat. Amen. Thank the Lord for continually adding to the church. And for some, some choose not to come during the um, regular worship. Some come after the benediction and you're certainly welcome to do that and we'll prepare to welcome you and take you in as well. Let's prepare our hearts to worship God in giving and we are always grateful for your generosity, the things that we are able to do, whether it is feeding uh, people or whether it is helping or whether it is buying material or encouraging people who fought, uh, fell on hard times. It is through your generosity and how God has blessed you that we're able to be a blessing to others. So we are able to give by Gimlify, or you're able to bring your gifts. Uh, some choose to, to, to mail their gifts, and if you need to mail them, we can provide that information as well. If you're able to stand, we just want to ask God's blessings upon you, and then those who will be bringing their gift, we ask you to briefly return to your seats for a few a uh, little bit, few bits of the information, and then we will dismiss for today. Let's receive the, uh, uh, ask God's blessings upon our giving. God, thank you for this time of worship and giving. We are grateful, God, again, just for the privilege of being able to give. Bless your people, oh God, even as they sacrifice um, and, 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 and um, give back to the kingdom's work. And so, God, we pray that we are faithful stewards and that you'll be pleased with what we do as a testament of our stewardship and trust in you. Bless your people, O oh God, even as they give. Bless their families, their households. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Please follow the directions of the ushers who are bringing their gifts. And we thank you. Thank you so much. To all of our visitors, thank you so much. Thank you so much. again for your giving. Thank you so much for your uh, faithfulness in helping us to do what God has empowered us to do. To all of our visitors, thank you. Let's thank the Lord for all of our visitors for this first time or one of many. We appreciate you and for tuning in with us online as well. We gather again this Wednesday. This Wednesday we do gather um, for our newcomer, uh, excuse me, for our Bible study. So we hope that you can be here. You have the option of joining on noon online Zoom. We just do it uh, for the Zoom at noon. And then um, at six o'clock, we gather to pray in case some people want to learn to pray or pray. We gather at six. The adults, the young people are doing some recreational things. So you're able to come and uh, we dismiss uh, fairly promptly. Some 6.30 to 7.30 is our study time. 
Um, we're also having the um, baptism orientation for we know that we do have some people that are being baptized on the first Sunday in uh, December. So that session will begin at 630 on Wednesday as well for those who are. Um, so we hope that you can be here um, at six o'clock. Excuse me. Zumba, Zumba. We need to work some of that. Uh, turkey and dressing off. Amen. That's on December the 2nd at 1 o'clock. You are welcome to come and be part of uh, the workout. We are grateful for uh, Miss Victoria, who's a med, med student, uh, who will be leading uh, that group. Um, also, uh, we want to uh, certainly encourage our Christian ed, those who are teachers. Thank you for your teaching, uh, especially with our younger people. And uh, But here's the call, here's the cry. There's still need for more teachers. That there's a need for more teachers. So if you're interested, November the 30th, trying to get things in order, the potential teachers and our existing teachers, six o'clock, we want to see you here. Amen. Then we're preparing for our young people Christmas pageant, Christmas uh, pageant, um, part of the uh, Christmas Eve celebration, which of course is December the 24th. And so they are beginning to learn their roles and their parts now. So we want them to be part of the Sunday school, be part of the Wednesday study. This is when they're doing most of their rehearsals. So help us to bring our young people in and help them to learn as they are enjoying themselves. They are learning about the importance of Christ and his word. Amen. Finally, 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 how many like the decorations? Just tactful decoration in the church. How many like it? Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Some don't want to raise their hand because they know that there's another request. Here it is. You're able to partake of helping to do the tactful decorating of the church for Christmas celebration. Now, we have a faithful few, but there's room for more. Amen. So December the 1st, uh, that's Friday, this Friday coming at 6 o'clock. We're going to invite you. How many How many going to be here? How many going to be here? How many? Some of them raising their hand real low. Some just not ignoring that I'm requesting it. How many is going to be here? All right. Did anybody take pictures of those people who are going to be here? Praise God. Six o'clock. We are appreciative and we are grateful for those who have been consistent in their helping. It doesn't just happen, but it doesn't take a lot of work when you got willing workers. Amen. So it's always easier when you have more workers. So you don't have to be the expert. We got some experts that can help guide us and know where the stuff is. We just need a few extra helping hands. Praise God for you. Amen. Will you stand with us and we want to ask God's blessings upon you. Thank you so much. And our new members, thank you so much. Karen, raise your hand. Where's Karen? Karen is in the back. See Karen in the back. Our church administrator, raise your hand again. They can't see you, Karen. There she is. So please see her uh, right after the benediction. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for our time together. Just thank you, God, for the hearts and the minds of your people. We're grateful, God, that we come together in a joyous time together. And God, even now, God, we want to lift up the Hatchet family, God. Pray for comfort. Pray for strength, oh God. Lord, we know that you are the one who's able to bring all comfort in time of mourning and grief, oh God. Thank you for being our peace that surpasses our understanding. And God, as we prepare to leave, God, give safe travel just as you brought people here. And those who are tuning in, God, keep them safe, oh God. Lord, we believe in you. We believe in your word. Your word is true and it will not return void. So we say thank you for your word fulfilling its purpose. Keep us in your jealous care until we come together again. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, people of God said amen and amen. God bless you. Make sure you greet somebody before you lead this place.